Hello and welcome. I am in a machine shop. You can see the layout of the machine shop on your screen. Very importantly, when you get into a machine shop, there are certain safety practices that all of us need to follow. The first safety practice is to wear an apron. The second one is to wear a goggle. And the third one is to wear a shoes. Unless these three are not worn, entry to the machine shop is prohibited. The purpose of the video on the fitting shop is to make you aware of the good filing practices that exist and also bring in confidence in each of you that filing is a good trade to learn. In this video, I will talk to you about an important skill called the fitting practice. I told you about a skill. What is a skill? It is something that we have learnt by experience. What are the common skills that we see in and around us? The common skills that we see in and around us could be carpentry. You have all seen carpenters sawing the wood. It could be goldsmithy where people make gold ornaments for you. It could be pottery where people make pots for you, pots and all mud articles for you. Similarly, fitting is also an important skill that every engineer needs to learn at the time of education. Let us understand about this fitting practice a little better. When I mean fitting practice, I use the word fitting because I have a component here and in a component I need to fit something else and that is why the word fitting is used. I need to fit two components so that they can assemble comfortably. Let us go into a little detail of this. I have a component in my hand. It is a steel component as you can see. In this steel component, there is a groove here and there is a second groove here. Into these two grooves, there will be two more components that will get assembled. How do we assemble them? I am bringing a second component here and this component has to assemble into this groove here. I am going to bring a third component here and this third component has to get into assemble into this groove here. How do we make this happen? I can make this happen provided in the second component I have to remove the extra material which you can see this is the extra material. This material has to be removed and in the third component also you can see there is so much of extra material that needs to be removed. How do we make this possible? It means I have to remove the extra material which is available in these two components so that they can fit into the grooves that have been put into this component here. So when I say the word fitting, I use the word fitting where I assemble two components into one another. How do we do this process of assembly now? This process of assembly is done by a word called filing. When I mean filing, I say I need to remove the extra material here so that once the extra material is removed, this can comfortably get into the slot. So when I use the word filing, filing means removal of extra material, removal of extra metal from the component so that two components can assemble comfortably into one another. To tell you some history about this filing, this filing practice has been in existence since the Iron Age, since the Bronze Age. I am talking of 2300 BC and 200 BC. And that time we used to see the men using files to cut the stones. They used rasps and files to cut the stones. With this background, we will move into how the whole filing practice happens in a machine shop. We saw the fitting practice and we said fitting involves assembling two parts or two components by or removing extra material from the two components so that they make a good fit. What are the different equipments that are used in the fitting practice? The most important equipment that is used is called a vice. It is spelt as V-I-S-C. And in English, V-I-S-C means to hold something, to hold the work, to hold metal. So, 
here the vice is mounted on a bench and that is why it is called as a bench vice. This equipment is called the bench vice. We will look at what are the different parts of the bench vice. This bench vice has many parts. Firstly, this is the base on which the bench vice is mounted. This is the base. This base is firmly attached to the table. The second important component is called the jaw. As you can see when I rotate the handle, you can see that there is something that moves apart. You are able to see that this is moving apart and this is called the movable jaw. Very similar to the jaws that we have here. This becomes the movable jaw and this is the fixed jaw. When I talk, I only move the movable jaw so that I am able to talk. The same logic is applied here. This moves whereas this side is fixed. As and when I start moving this, the jaw comes nearer and if I have a certain component to be fixed, I can fix the component correctly here and start moving it so that the component gets firmly fixed in between the jaws. It's like the way we eat. Whatever food material we eat, it comes in between the two teeth. So these are the two teeth or the jaws between which the component is fixed and it is held very firmly and now it is ready for the filing operation to be performed. So in a nutshell, let us recap the different parts of this bench wise VISC. Let me repeat it again. It's a bench wise. This is the base. This is the movable jaw. This is the fixed jaw and this is the handle with which I can rotate it. This handle is used for the rotation purpose to clamp the workpiece in between the jaws. Many vices have an option where I can raise this. It means depending on the height at which I want to perform, I can raise it to a convenient height, lock it so that I can perform the fitting operation or the filing operation at the height at which it is convenient to me. So uh, this is an adjustable height bench wise. We saw the bench wise which is a work holding device. Now we will see another tool which helps us in the process of metal removal and this tool is called a file. This is a file. This is called a file and I use this tool extensively to remove the extra material or metal from the workpiece. There are different kinds of files. If you can see here, all these, all of them, all of them here, they are the flat files. Over here, you can see that there is a round file. It is round. This is a square file. This is a triangular file. This is a half round file and each of these files are used to create that kind of an impression in the workpiece. Let me go a little more in depth about the files. When I talk of a flat file, you, you we have different kinds of files. This is a coarse file, very coarse. The texture is very coarse. On the other hand, this is a very fine file. The texture is not coarse. Why do we use such? The coarse files are used where I have to remove more material initially and the fine files are used for finishing operations only. There is another distinction in the files and the distinction is called a single cut and a double cut file. What I am holding now in my hand is a single cut file. You can clearly see that the cuttings are only in one direction from my left to the right. On the other hand, if I look at this particular file, you can see that the cuttings are on both sides. So when we use a single cut file, we use these single cut files for finishing operations. We use the double cut coarse files for heavy metal removal. We will go into some more details about where these different files are used. For example, I, I want to use a triangular file. Where do I use a triangular file? This is a triangular file. Now, I am going to use a triangular file where I need to make a triangular notch. 
in a certain workplace. So this file can be used conveniently to make a triangular notch because the amount of material is removed only as per one part or two sides of the triangle. I will next go to a half round file. If you can see here, this is a half round file and again here when I start removing the metal, the indentation that gets formed here is semicircular or half round and depending upon the kind of indentation I want or depending upon the kind of a crevice or a cavity that I want, I can use different kinds of file. Another very important tool that is used in the filing practice is the hacksaw per se, hacksaw. It is called the hack saw. It consists of the hacksaw frame. This is a frame. The outer one is a frame. This is called the hacksaw blade, which you are able to see. And this is called the wing nut, which is used to tighten. This will help us in tightening. This is an important tool because this tool is used to chip off unnecessary or unwanted material. How do I use the hacksaw? If you see, this is the hacksaw blade. I am going to mount the component exactly here and I am going to make the first indentation. I am going to hold the tool so that the tool is completely parallel to the base. I am going to make the first indentation so that the tool can firmly stand there in its place. After I make the indentation, I will start applying pressure in one direction only. And the reverse I am going to pull it because in the front direction it starts cutting. So if you can see, I am applying pressure in one direction, it is able to take the cut. In the reverse I am just pulling it back. And this is how I can use to see that I can cut the unwanted material in the work piece. What you are able to see in my right hand is called a wire brush. This is more like a cleaning equipment. Like in our houses, we have the broomstick. This does the cleaning part. Where do we use this? When we do filing, there is quite a possibility that the metal pieces get stuck in between these diamond cuts. So I am going to use a wire brush in that direction so that all the unnecessary material which has got stuck into this gets removed out. Let us summarize the different tools which we use for the fitting practice. Most important tool is the work holding device which is a bench wise. This is a file which is the material removal tool. This is the hacksaw which is a cutting tool. This is the wire brush which is a cleaning tool. We need to have these four things in order to complete the fitting practice.